Well, good morning, guys and gals. What a beautiful day it is here in Tennessee. Although, with the temperatures and all the snow we got, look at how deep that snow is on my bird path. Yeah, we got five or six inches, I'm guessing. And I haven't been down to my shop yet. I'm heading down there now. We'll see what the temperature is down here. Might as well be back in Minnesota. Ah, looks like about 11 degrees to me. Well, let's go inside and see what it is. It's got to be warmer in there, don't you think? Oh, i going to turn off the sound system. Let's see what the temperature is in here. I can get it so you can see it with all the glare. Uh, looks like about 18 degrees in here. It's just like Minnesota. Look at this. My bottle of water that I left down here is frozen. I guess it's cold now, hey? Well, let me get my heat turned on and we'll do some work on the goofy cart today. I got some things to show you and some things to get done. Hold on to your hats, because here we go. Well, now you remember that I was having problems when we had this running with it uh, blowing exhaust back out through the carburetors on both sides. Well, I've pulled the head off here on the left side, and uh, there are four strokes to the engine. You have the intake stroke, then you have the compression stroke, you have the power stroke and the exhaust stroke. All right, so we're going to go through the strokes and I'm going to show you something. Now, this is the, we're at the bottom of the intake stroke right now. See that? The piston is all the way down. The intake valve is open right here. See that? and the exhaust valve is tight, which is what it should be. Now we're going to bring the piston back up. This is going to be the compression stroke. And theoretically both of these valves should be closed at the top, but look at this. See that little white mark on there? You see that white mark there on the valve? I can turn this. See that? That valve is not closed tight. That's the exhaust valve. And on a, a Briggs and Stratton engine, they tell you to be a quarter of an inch below top dead center, which is right there. This one's that one's not tight even. Look at that. Neither one of these valves are closed all the way. Both of them are open. Quarter past, they're still both open. So we're not getting good compression and even uh, we're, we're getting exhaust leaking out on what should be the power stroke. This should be the power stroke here and our exhaust valve is still loose. And so is our intake valve. Both of our valves are too loose. So I need to adjust those valves so that when they're at the top of the compression stroke, which is, as I said, one quarter of an inch, so I'll have to measure a quarter of an inch from the top of the head to the top of the piston, one quarter of an inch past top dead center, these should both be tight and they are not. They're both loose. So we're not getting good sealing. I'm amazed that it starts and runs as well as it does with the valves being like that. 
So I have to take the valves out and the way you adjust the valves on a flat head is you have to take the valves out and you have to actually shave the end of the valve stem because this is not like an overhead where you have rocker arms that you can adjust it's not that simple so let me get my valve spring compressor out and we'll get to it so I don't have a traditional valve spring compressor I have a homemade one um, and I have a valve spring compressor end welded onto my C-clamp here and you can see how I have it hooked on my valve spring down there and I'm going to compress it until I can get the valve keepers off because I have to be able to grind the end of that valve and to do that I've got to pull it all the way out hold on to your hats now okay now you can see I have my valve spring compressed and what I need to do is to remove the valve keepers. I have magnetized my screwdriver so I can do that. See that? There's one. I'll get that last one out, but you get the idea. I've got to hold the... I can't hold this and hold the camera and hold my screwdriver all at the same time. Okay. Now I have my valve keepers out. And now we can go ahead and remove the valve. And I'm just going to catch my screwdriver down in there on the lip of the valve. And push it back a little bit. Enough to pull the valve right out. Just like that. So now what I need to do is I've got to grind the end of this valve right here off a little bit. And uh, now we, I'm going to take off the amount of what the valve clearance is supposed to be and then we'll put it back in and check it because um, we, there should be clearance not only should it be the valve be tight but there should be clearance between the valve and the valve tappet so that's why we have to grind this end off and we're not going to do it with a grinder we're going to do it with a file because we don't want to take a huge amount off we're talking thousands of an inch now I also wanted to show you that this valve is seating fine when it seats it's not burnt at all it's just not seating all the time which is what it should be it's nice and clean all the way around there so we'll clean the valve up and we'll grind the end off and we'll check our settings I'm only going to do this one now the second one the intake valve will be the same way and we'll have to do the other side as well and uh, I'm not going to show you that all now I'll tell you what, it's so cold down here in my shop, my propane heater won't light off. So I've got my two little electric heaters going, and I've got it almost up to 30 degrees in here. But that's still cold on the old hands when they're bare, you know? That's why you see me got gloves on. Hold on your hats. See, my battery is succumbing to the cold, too. Here are the specs right out of the Briggs & Stratton manual so that you know that the intake, the minimum is four thousandths and the maximum is six. That's with the springs installed and the exhaust is seven and nine with the springs installed. Without the springs, it's six and eight for the intake and 9 and 11 for the exhaust so we're going to be checking them uh, initially without the springs because we're just going to push it in and hold it in place and so we'll be looking for the exhaust which is what we're doing right now so I'll bring you back when I get the 
valve shaved a little bit and we'll put it in and we'll try it and see what we get. Yeah, let's see if I could do this uh, without knocking you over. I've got you leaned up here. You can see I put my valve back in. I cleaned it all up and I've gone and I have ground the end of it several times, probably four or five times, till I got to the point where I could actually get my feeler gauge and you can see here I have it set I'll turn it around so you can read it right side up I have a 10 millimeter gauge going between 9 and 11 without the valve spring in place and now I'm pushing against the valve with my thumb out here and if I can see what I'm doing, I can just get this to slide down in there. So that's exactly what I want. Is my 10 millimeter. So that's the setting that I need for my valve. And uh, I wanted to show you too. Let me get you moved over here. That I have set my... I went to top dead center and then went beyond it by a quarter of an inch. So you can read my thing. There's a quarter of an inch from the top of the piston to the top of the cylinder deck. Got to pull the heads off, pull the valves out, and grind them a little at a time until you get your right clearance. So I'm going to finish doing this valve job and we'll get it all put back together and see how she runs. Hopefully no more puffing back through the carburetors. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, thumbs up, sharing, all them good things. Stay warm. Bye now.